What's going on guys? Uh, it's a bit of a tense moment right now. Uh, actually the vlog that you're about to see is from a couple of days ago. Uh, driving around with Patrick Kilpatrick. You're gonna learn all about him. But uh, I just wanna give you kind of a brief, brief update as to what's going on today. Uh, woke up this morning that Malibu's got a huge fire that's happening. Uh, it's north of us. Uh, there's lots of people been have been displaced, evacuations and all kinds of things. We're sticking to our guns. We're staying here. And uh, for a number of reasons, I do believe strongly that the firefighters are doing their job. Uh, always have a tremendous faith in those guys, which is why I'm wearing my fire shirt right now. Malibu Colony. But we live right uh, right above Pacific Coast Highway, and uh, this is the quietest I think I've, I've ever heard it. It's almost the sound that you hear in the middle of the night uh, sometimes when you know everyone's asleep and no cars are going down PCH. But all the sirens have stopped. All the cars have made their way out because it's been mandatory evacuation. We decided to, to stay, stay here and to finish up the stuff that we're doing. We've been through a lot of fires in Malibu uh, over the last few decades and several of them have gotten incredibly close to us. In fact, one was right up the hill. This one is about, right now it's about uh, 12 or 15 miles from us and it is making its way down. I just got a call from uh, Eric and Celeste. They are evacuating because they live up north and they're making their way down towards us. The important thing to do in a situation like this when it comes to fires is to not panic and not necessarily listen to the news because the news is, uh, well, you know what the news does. There's anything that they can get you to, to, to read the article. It's basically what they're gonna do. There's nothing better than first-hand accounts, which is great because I just got a call from Eric, as I said, and he looked over and he could actually see the flames in, in an area that he's passing by. So I know exactly where the fire is right now. Pretty much everything we have that's important is packed. We can throw it in the truck and we can hightail it out of here if need be. But the most important thing, according to Kathy right now, is getting the costume done and that's what she's focusing on. Ellen DeGeneres, if you're watching this, I hope you can appreciate this right now. Sonata, which I've had for a week. I haven't had a chance to do a lot of stuff with. I did write a piece on it. You guys probably have read that, but it's getting swapped right now with a Mazda. So they're just arriving now. Let's go and check it out. into town. Uh, I'm actually pretty excited about this. I'm going to be meeting with an actor named Patrick Kilpatrick. Patrick's people uh, reached out to me a few days ago and said that uh, he would love to be on the vlog. And far be it for me to say no. So I'm headed up to the Coffee Bean. I'm going to meet him up there. We're going to jump in his Jaguar. We're going to go for a spin and you guys are going to find out all about this dude. It's not quite that way. See how it's taller? Yeah, it's it's one of those tricks of the trade. Uh, hanging out. Uh, thank you, Matt. Thank you for joining it's me. It's my today. pleasure to be here. It's very, very awesome. Uh, this is Patrick Kilpatrick. If you if you notice this this space right here, normally uh, it would make you nervous. 
but I'm not nervous today. Yeah, a lot of times they don't put makeup on me because they want the lighting to make me look as unattractive as possible. <laughs> well, you look fantastic today, and I, I think it's because your You're book your, your book is doing well. Right? It is doing well. I'm yeah. having a good time. Very cool. And um, among that is meeting you. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, we are in Malibu today at the uh, at the Country Mart where we normally have the car show, as you guys know. But we're hanging out today with Patrick, uh, an incredible actor. He's been around for a very, very long time. Uh, done a majority of stuff that you guys have probably seen. Very excited because he's got his new book out right here, uh, Dying for Living. So uh, uh, I'm gonna, we're going to talk about this book, and we're going to let everybody know where they can get it, which is very cool. But you have a Jaguar. We're going to go take it for a spin. Sounds great. All right. Let's, All right. let's go. Onward and upward. XJ Sport. XJ Sport, otherwise known as the really fast Jag. Deceptively, it goes, gets up there so fast and it feels like 110, feels like 60. So you have to be... Uh, you know, when, when the mirrors say objects in mirror are closer than they appear, it's really just the window. There's also a police officer <laughs> very close to yes. the windshield there. Be nice, be good. I, I did hear that uh, among your your incredible acting career, you're also a chef. I like to cook, but I think of it as more of like uh, food preparation. Mm. My theory is if you start with really good ingredients, no, pretty much however you put it together, it's going to mm. turn out okay. Food was always important to me. Uh, I remember at a very young age, nine years old, saying, rich or poor, I was going to eat well. <laughs> and I've kept to that. That's that's a good mantra. So, uh, yeah. yeah. If we were heading back to your house, what would you make that would be really good? Well, what do you like? Do you have any uh, things, considerations um, like veganism? Or, yeah, we're, we're vegan. My wife and I are vegan, so pastas that are you know gluten-free, things like that. Yeah, everything. Uh, the, my lady, uh, Heidi Bright, is uh, um, stays away from gluten and so mm -hmm. we've got stuff like bean pastas and yeah. uh, red lentil pasta is a favorite. Yeah. You know we're really spoiled here because everything we have, I just did a movie called Night Walk in Morocco and Morocco's kind of known for good food. Oh yeah, sure. But the, the situation exists that we get everything of every type of world food here in LA and it's all organic. Yeah. And it's all pure. So it's it's kind of hard to beat what we have going on in this town. And the energy in this town, uh, culinary-wise, is through the roof. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. You know, I did a movie, the first film adaptation of um, a Louis L'Amour uh, book. And we did the first film adaptation of the uh, his work, which was called Quick and the Dead. It starred uh, Sam Elliott, uh, Kate Capshaw, and myself, and an uh, English actor named Tom Conti. Well, I'm no fool, and I was single at the time. The moment I saw Kate Capshaw, I thought, God, she's a fox. <laughs> and so uh, I called her up for dinner after the first day of work, and she went, no, and hung up the phone. And I went, well, I guess you have to be kind of cold if you're a successful actress or whatever. Mm -hmm. 17 years later, I uh, was doing Minority Report with Steven Spielberg. Right, right. And she came on the set, and I went up to her and I said, uh, Ms. Capshaw, uh, you may not remember, but we did a movie together 17 years ago. And she whirled on me and she said, yeah, you and I had a thing for each other on that movie. <laughs> and Stephen was about 10 feet away. And I, you know, I revere Stephen and I didn't want him in any way, shape or form to be sure. uncomfortable. So I was very proud of myself. I pulled myself up to my full height <laughs> and I said, yes, I had the good taste to ask you out and you had the good sense not to go. <laughs>
everybody from Sean Connery to all the action guys. Sure. John claude and Arnold and uh, Steven Seagal. And every one of them is uh, interesting psychologically. And um, you get a perspective when you're playing against these people that I've been able to. I think something your, your viewers might find interesting, Sean Connery's is such a good actor that the voice he has in real life is very different from the one he mm. says publicly. Mm. His voice in real life is much more working class Scottish Interesting. than uh, yeah. the way he speaks uh, on camera. Right. I'm getting ready to play the president of the United States in a movie called Burn Off. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm looking forward to Good that. president or bad president? You know, uh, we all have our arcs. <laughs> you've, you've played a lot of villains, but you've also played a lot of a lot of heroes, a lot of good guys. A pastor, he said that you uh, you mentioned another another interview. Uh, you're going to play the president. Um, you know, when you when you approach these roles, um, how what kind of percentage from what you read uh, compared to what you bring to the role? You know, what what is it? How do you approach a role? to be able to enhance it from what, what's in the written word initially. I think it helps. That I was very blessed that my parents really stressed education. Mm -hmm. uh, and they also lauded me if I came up with new use of words and things like that. So I came from a literate background. Mm -hmm. um, and having that sort of liberal arts education allows you to bring both a verbal dexterity and a, 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 a breadth of Sure. Sort of know how and research to a part. Now, doing the research for a part when you're playing a serial killer is not the same as doing it. Yeah. Um, but it certainly helps. Yeah, it's right. got a movie coming out called Catalyst. Mm -hmm. Really interesting. And I played a ped pedophile priest in it. Yeah. Cinematically, it's yeah. it's a great thing to do. I mean, sure. I've been hired as a thug, but because I can improv uh, uh, verbally, right. they end up with sort of a, more of a mastermind guy, right, right. Uh, which they always appreciate. Sure, um, sure. So you can, uh, having that that skill set is real asset to an actor because you're going to be in a lot of films that maybe aren't fully realized mm -hmm. scripturally. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's nice to be able to improv your way out of situations. Sure. And, I knew that I'd had a unique upbringing and a unique career um, that gave me some insider intel mm -hmm. to a lot of things in Hollywood. But I always like to tell stories, and I found if I was in groups of people uh, and everybody started telling stories, I found I often had a story that topped this, their story. Mm, interesting. And who wants to be the bad guy constantly topping other people's stories? Right. So I, I felt I had a place to put all, I had to find a place to put all these stories. Yeah. The other thing was I got engaged and I really wanted to entertain my fiance, so I would send her a chapter a week. Mm and basically try to enthrall her with the story yeah. and pretty soon I had a draft and then lo and behold it got picked up by a big agency the first and only agency Fantastic. that ever looked at it so that was kind of a minor miracle yeah. when I was young my parents wouldn't allow me to watch much television although I saw some early stuff like Untouchables and Leave it to Beaver and all the usual Americana but so I read a lot and also, I had an interesting upbringing. My mother had some mental illness, and my father was an extraordinary accomplished guy, a World War II hero, and um, he founded Cigna Corporation and struck out George Bush to win the National Collegiate Baseball Championship. Wow. So I had this kind of very uh, privileged upbringing that was marred by my mother's issues. And so I read a lot to escape. And so my early inspirations were people like Hunter Thompson and Ken Kesey and Neil Cassidy, of course, uh, a real person in Ken Kesey's work, Thomas McGuane's work, uh, Jack Kerouac's work, Ernest Hemingway's work, mm -hmm. Fitzgerald. So my earliest heroes were literate. Yeah, uh, people, either yeah. authors or characters. You had a, you had a signing at uh, Barnes & Noble recently, and that I, went really well. I did, yeah. I was very gratified. The manager said it was the best author event they'd ever had. Great. So where can people get the book besides there? You can get digital on Amazon.com, hardcover on Amazon.com. 
uh, hardcover on Barnes and Nobles. If you go to PatrickKillPatrick.com, there's a list of signing events, or you can uh, there's a little button you can uh, you can push to um, get an autographed copy directly through PayPal. Fantastic. The book is published by Boulevard Books, and November 17th, I'm headlining a Boulevard Books event at the largest uh, Barnes and Noble in uh, the nation at Union Square in Manhattan. Very cool. Uh, I'll be on at uh, 5 o'clock at uh, Union uh, Square, Barnes and Noble's November 17th. Very cool. Uh, hope you come down for that and uh, you'll meet not only myself, but four other really good Well, if they're, if they're not, I have to apologize because if they're not there at your signing, they're probably at my car show. That's, well, you know, that's one of the first uh, things you got to worry about. But I'll send, I'll send them there right after. When you're a producer, you got to make sure you gotta, you're not uh, competing with a really great event. Awesome. Well, thanks for not beating me to a pulp. No, no. You know, it's a, the, the guys who play villains are usually pretty nice guys. They are. It's they the are. comics you got to watch. <laughs> They're the dark personality. <laughs> right, right. So. Oh, oh.